October night and Halloween is in the air. At the nightmare haunted house, practically a New York institution, no one expects sweet dreams. This thing is trying to kill me. Someone was chasing me with a gun. It looked like something out of a horror movie. But real life nightmares are no laughing matter. I'm running away from something and I'm stuck in place. Like I can't run, I can't walk, I can't move. Like I try to step and I just fall over. I go into the bathroom, I turn on the light and the entire bathroom is literally covered in blood. My teeth will just all of a sudden start becoming loose and fall out. Recently, I had a dream where I woke up from my dream and I still didn't have teeth. Like millions of others around the world, these young people suffer from chronic nightmares. Not just bad dreams, but horrifying, hair-raising dreams. It'll be such a realistic situation and then something terrifying will happen to me. The devil really is in the details. The imagery can be very, very vivid, and so even once they awaken, they're still left with those images replaying in their minds, and it can be very troubling. University of Montreal psychology professor Antonio Zadra got a wake-up call early in life when he had a nightmare so powerful that he gave up on med school so he could study them. But it was his face that told it all. Uh, it was all crumpled. It was ashen, gray, and wrinkled. For two decades, he's been following his dreams by collecting other people's. So how many dreams am I looking at in these file cabinets? Uh, in uh, these here, we probably have about seven to 8,000, and there's uh, about another two to 3,000 in the other ones on the other side. And it's not hard for Professor Zadra to find bad dreams. As many as one in four adults has one nightmare or more a month. Roughly one in 17 reports being frightened by nightmares at least once a week. This is nothing new. In 1781, artist Henri Fuseli painted his vision of the nightmare, portraying it as a menacing visitor, suffocating its victim. So originally, nightmares were conceived as these demons or evil forces that came and visited us. We thought that people were possessed. Possessed or they were being tempted or being made aware of the evil forces that surrounds them. Some of our most common nightmares involve our deepest fears. And so the teacher dreams he's in front of class naked. Or the doctor walks into surgery and suddenly can't remember how to do the operation. Or the television correspondent finds herself on camera mid-sentence and just, just goes uh, <laughs> just blank. Are there personalities who are more disposed to have nightmares? People who are anxious, people who get distressed a lot, particularly when something bad occurs, are much more likely to have frequent nightmares. And watching horror movies probably doesn't help either. But for sleep specialist Ross Levin, The Exorcist and its frightening dream sequence inspired something positive, his career. In his practice today, he uses a technique called image rehearsal therapy to stop patients' nightmares, and he says it can work in as few as three sessions. Imagine the nightmare and imagine changing the nightmare in a way that becomes less nightmarish and practicing that imagery over and over again during the day. And that tends to rewire the nervous system, we think. So by thinking of, a, of an alternative ending to my nightmare during the day, mm -hmm. I can re-script it? Correct. I can make it go away completely? You can make it go away completely. Yeah. Sounds like a dream come true, like directing your own personal movie. I had one patient, for example, who had a recurrent nightmare that someone was chasing her into a dark alley. So we worked on changing that to her turning around, and the man says, Miss, you left your wallet on the table. So in this situation, she reported having this dream for the next four or five nights the same way, except she incorporated the new ending. So she got her distressed. wallet back. And she got a wallet back. So there was an added benefit. What is it doing to their life? Uh -huh. By contrast, psychoanalyst Maxine Gann emphasizes not changing nightmares, but finding their deeper meaning. All of a sudden, I'm like, my teeth are falling out again. Take that common dream about losing your teeth. There are people who have talked about 
teeth falling out is meaning um, being quite symbolic of transitions in life. Because when you're young um, and your teeth are falling out, um, that's a period of transition. When your teeth fall out uh, and you're old, that's an also very important um, transition period. Once you establish those connections, can you usually stop these nightmares from occurring? Uh, they typically do abate. Surprisingly, the promise of a cure fell flat with our nightmare sufferers. Sometimes can be inspirational. Like Who seem convinced the there's good in their bad to, dreams. To I don't ever want to actually experience any of these things, so it's kind of like I'm still getting to have these experiences, but from the safety of my bed. It's almost fun to analyze them in the morning. Like, not only do you get a sense of relief when you know that it's a dream, it's almost like, oh wow, like how crazy was that? It's almost like, thinking about a movie or something, it's just fun. Try keeping that in mind tonight. Sweet dreams.